get your ticket and climb aboard our motor car excursion on the historical Adirondack Railroad. By the late 1800s, railroads had crisscrossed much of the United States. But in New York, there was no rail line directly traversing the rugged Adirondack region. But by October 1892, Dr. William Seward Webb had built the Mohawk and Malone Railway in only 18 months. The line originated in Herkimer, connected at Remsen Depot, then ran up to Malone, New York, and later into Canada. Our excursion began at the Remsen Depot, where we set on, then traveled north to Big Moose Station, where we stopped for lunch. Afterwards, we continued to our turnaround point at Tupper Lake Junction. Join us at the Remsen Depot. It was built in 1855 by the Utica and Black River Railroad. It was a busy rail hub, and by its peak served as many as 40 passenger trains a day on three connecting rail lines. The three lines are pictured here, all heading south. Coming up is Forest Port Station at mile marker 35.5. The station was built about one and a half miles east of the main Forest Port settlement. By the early 1900s, the population of Forestport was over 1,500 people. This photo is circa 1910 and shows a very busy station.
The next station is Woodgate at mile marker 42.5. Formerly, this station and nearby hamlet were called White Lake, but in 1924 the names were changed to Woodgate. The station is privately owned and has been beautifully restored. The early October fall colors were stunning and on full display. Next up is McKeever Station at mile marker 49.1. The station is thought to be named after R. Townsend McKeever, first identified as a private secretary to Dr. Webb. Here we are approaching Thandera Station at mile marker 57.9. It served as an entryway to the chain of lakes in the Adirondack region. By 1896, an independent railroad was built attaching at Fulton Chain and running up to Old Forge. In June of 1920, the name was changed from Fulton Chain to Thandera. Thandera is now a stop on the Adirondack Scenic Railroad and houses a museum inside.
station we highlight is Carter Station, formerly called Clearwater. It is no longer standing, but its foundation is still visible. It stood at mile marker 64.1 and did not appear on the rail timetables until 1899. It connected the Mohawk and Malone with the Raquette Railway. In 1912, the Clearwater name was changed to Carter. The station served both passenger and freight. Big Moose Station at mile marker 69.3. The train station at Big Moose expedited the travel for property owners and tourists to the two large scenic lakes nearby.
Here you see us stopped on the station siding. It was nice to relax and leisurely enjoy our hour and a half lunch break. Many people brought their lunches and others ate at the Big Moose restaurant. The station itself sits at a higher elevation than any other train station east of the Mississippi River. The long lunch break was necessary to allow the Adirondack Scenic Railroad to pass by us. Beaver River Station, at mile marker 77.6, stood on the west side of the tracks. It is no longer standing or visible. Trees have overgrown what is left of its foundation. When the station was built, the area was already popular with hunters and fishermen.
In 1902, the Norwich Walk Lodge was built and can be seen on the right. Brandreth Station at mile marker 81.3. The station is no longer standing, but its foundation is still clearly visible. The station was chiefly built to service the local lumber industry. In the early 1900s, the Mackay Mack Corporation built a logging railroad from the station out nine miles to Brandreth Lake. The rail line branched out to various loading areas. Logging trains, regardless of the season, would haul timber down to the station and onto Dr. Webb's railroad, now under control of the New York Central. We are now approaching Lake Lila within Nahasane Park. Dr. Webb had set aside this area for his own personal use. Coming up is the private station house that he had built. The train station stands at mile marker 87.8. What's left of the once beautiful station now stands in ruins. But the original construction was large with living quarters for the station master. The grounds around the station were kept beautifully manicured and maintained. Train schedules listed the stop as private, and only invited guests, special permit holders, or workers were permitted to disembark. The park area was vast and had its own fire service train and crew. This photo from 1903 showed dozens of firefighters and was taken by the New York State Forest, Fish, and Game Commission. Here on the west shore of Lake Lila, Dr. Webb built Forest Lodge for his family and friends to enjoy. Dr. Webb's personal train was highly ornate and is pictured here stopped further up the line at Tupper Lake Junction. Over 100 years later, the lake is just as beautiful and serene.
Next up is Sabata Station, which is no longer standing. It was formerly called Long Lake West. Stagecoach lines provided transportation four miles east to Little Tupper Lake and 18 miles to Long Lake. The station was located at mile marker 94.7. The station's name, Long Lake West, was changed to Sabatis in 1923. It was to honor the legendary guide Mitchell Sabatis, who was born in 1823 and died in 1906. Horseshoe Lake at mile marker 99.9. .9. We stopped here for rest and a second safety meeting. Here we are approaching Tupper Lake Junction at mile marker 113.6. By 1890, John Hurd had already built a railroad into the Tupper Lake area. Dr. Webb was unable to strike a deal to use Mr. Hurd's existing railroad. So instead, he crossed here in Tupper Lake Junction and continued his railroad northeast toward Malone. Tupper Lake Junction is our final stop and turnaround point. We arrived here at about 4.15 p.m. 
Here, we tied down for the night to enjoy dinner and accommodations in town and got a good night's sleep for the return trip in the morning. Thanks for joining us on this excursion, and we'll see you out on the rails.